Today we are going to discuss about the generation of vestigial sideband signals. There are different methods used for the generation of vestigial sideband signal and here we are going to consider two of such methods. First one is by using an analog multiplier and the second one is by using the filter method. Let's first consider the case of generation of VSB signal by using analog multiplier. This is the block diagram for the generation of VSB signal by using analog multiplier method. When we consider this block diagram, the basic blocks remains same as in the case of single sideband generation and the only difference is in the cutoff frequency values of the bandpass filter. We have already discussed about the block diagram for the generation of VSB signal in our previous class for vestigial sideband modulation technique. You can refer that video class to get clear idea about the cutoff frequencies that we are selecting to obtain the required vestigial sideband signal. Okay. When we consider a vestigial sideband signal, we know in the vestigial sideband modulation technique, we are transmitting one sideband completely along with a fraction of the other sideband. So we have two cases or we have two signals. In one case, we will transmit the lower sideband completely and a vestige of the upper sideband. And in the other case, we will transmit the upper sideband completely along with the vestige of the lower sideband. Okay. We can obtain that vestigial sideband signals by using this arrangement. When we consider this block diagram here, first block is an analog multiplier and we know at the output of the analog multiplier, we will get the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. Okay. And we have already derived the equation for that double sideband suppressed carrier signal in our previous class. And we know the output of the analog multiplier V1 is equal to this Vm into Vc and that is equal to Vm sin omega mt into Vc sin omega ct and that is equal to mvc by 2 cos omega c minus omega m into t minus mvc by 2 cos omega c plus omega m into t. So this is our double sideband suppressed carrier signal at the output of this analog multiplier. Okay. Then as I said earlier in vestigial sideband modulation technique, we will transmit one sideband completely along with a vestige of the other sideband. Okay. So for that selection, we are using this bandpass filter section. By properly choosing the cutoff frequencies for this bandpass filter, we can select the required sideband and a vestige of the other sideband. So if the cutoff frequencies of this bandpass filter is selected in such a way that if the lower sideband and vestige of the upper sideband are passed out, then the output of the bandpass filter will be V is equal to MVC by 2 cos omega C minus omega M into T minus fraction of MVC by 2 cos omega C plus omega M into T. So here we are transmitting that lower sideband completely and a fraction of the upper sideband. Then alternatively, if the upper sideband and vestige of the lower sideband are passed out, then the output of the bandpass filter will be V is equal to minus MVC by 2 cos omega C plus omega M into T plus fraction of MVC by 2 cos omega C minus omega M into T. So in this case, we are transmitting that upper sideband completely along with a fraction of the lower sideband. So by properly choosing the cutoff frequencies for the bandpass filter, we can obtain either this one or this one at the output of that bandpass filter. And these signals corresponds to our required vestigial sideband signal. I am not explaining about the cutoff frequencies selected for this bandpass filter to obtain our required vestigial sideband signals because we have already discussed that cases in our class for vestigial sideband modulation technique. Okay, So you can refer that video class to get clear idea about the required cutoff frequencies chosen for this bandpass filter to obtain either this one or this one at the output. Okay, So from this it is clear that by using this arrangement we can generate the required vestigial sideband signal at the output. Let's now consider the second method for the generation of VSP signal that is by using filter method. When we consider this block diagram, this block diagram remains same as in the case of single sideband generation by using filter method. 
and the only difference is in the cutoff frequency values selected for this sideband suppression filter. Here this balanced modulator generates the double sideband suppressed carrier signal and the sideband suppression filter suppresses most of the unbanded sideband and allows a vestige of it along with the other sideband. So at the output of this sideband suppression filter we will get our required vestigial sideband signal. We know the output of the balanced modulator V1 is equal to 2Q cos omega c minus omega m into t minus 2Q cos omega c plus omega m into t. We have already derived this equation in our previous class for generation of DSBSC signal by using balanced modulator method. You can go through that video class to get clear idea about this equation. Okay. So here we have this double sideband suppressed carrier signal at the output of this balanced modulator and we know in vestigial sideband modulation technique we will transmit one sideband completely along with a fraction of the other sideband. So to obtain that vestigial sideband signals from this double sideband suppressed carrier signal we are using this sideband suppression filter. This sideband suppression filter is basically a band pass filter that has a flat band pass and extremely high attenuation outside the band pass. So depending upon the cutoff frequency values of this sideband suppression filter we can represent the output of the filter as V is equal to 2Q cos omega c minus omega m into t minus fraction of 2q cos omega c plus omega m into t or v is equal to minus 2q cos omega c plus omega m into t plus fraction of 2q cos omega c minus omega m into t. So depending upon the cutoff frequencies of this sideband suppression filter we will get either this one or this one at the output of this filter and we can see in this case we are transmitting this lower sideband component completely along with a fraction of the upper sideband component and in this case we are transmitting the upper sideband component completely along with a fraction of the lower sideband component. So this is our required vestigial sideband signal. We will transmit either this one or this one depending upon the cutoff frequencies of this sideband suppression filter. And here also I am not explaining about the cutoff frequencies selected to obtain this one or this one at the output. We have already discussed that in our previous class for VSB modulation technique. So you can go through that video class to get clear idea about the required cutoff frequencies selected here to obtain either this one or this one at the output. Okay. So by using this arrangement we can obtain our required vestigial sideband signals at the output.